Welcome to Speed Scene Live TV, the only show dedicated to the sportsman racer. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, Hedman Hustler Headers, m and Tires, and TheFolk.com. With your hosts, Diana Might, Bruce Barker, Scott Lucky Hudson, Alex Rogio, Bob Beck, Bryant Layton, with Donnie Couch, and Dar Hawthorne. And welcome to the show. You've locked into Speed Scene Live, which is kind of why we're here. See how that sort of circle yeah, of life thing works? In. Yeah. I'm Bruce Barker. There's Hot Rod Bob Beck. There's Alex the Car Girl Rogio. And uh, we got a special guest waiting in the wings. You know, I've, at this studio, yeah. there really isn't a wing, but, you know, it's, it, no it, you know, it's not even an addition. <laughs> <laughs> <You know. laughs> hey, but you know what? what? Uh, speaking of special guests, it's actually sort of our special host uh, on the phone. Hey, Lucky Hudson, man, where are you calling in from this time? And where have you been, I guess, most importantly? Yeah. Where I've been and where I'd be going. You know, I don't have wings, but I've been drinking Red Bull for three days straight, so uh, oh. I might have wings. I'm a little, I'm a little dingy. I'm a little over caffeinated, and uh, but I'm back in California. I made it home just a short few moments ago. Man, that's amazing! You crossed the state line. You were back in CA, and uh, so you've been everywhere in the last three weeks. Tell us about it. Well, I was in Kentucky Saturday for the NHRA Hot Rod Reunion, and uh, unfortunately I went out round one in the Curry Rear End Hedman Hustler Nova. You know, I, 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 uh, I didn't do a good job off the starting line, but it didn't matter because the guy in the car next to me ran almost a perfect package. So even if I had been on my game, I probably wouldn't have won anyway. But... Uh, I went ahead and packed it up Saturday night, hit the road, been driving almost nonstop ever since Saturday, and I think you're probably showing some footage from the Great Bend, Kansas Speed Scene Live Nationals. Next week, I got tons of footage from that. I got interviews. I got race action. I got all kinds of cool stuff. We got celebrities that were out there. Uh, all kinds of neat stuff that'll be on next week on Speed Scene Live TV. Um, you're you're going to be back? Yeah, I will be back next week. You will have proper ID when you come in the door, so we know who you are, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a different person now. I've been out uh -huh. in the Midwest, which is my favorite part of the country, and uh, you know, uh, I, I always come back a changed person. At least this time, I haven't come back with a southern drawl. I know, I know, because that very often happens. Although I would imagine, you know, the next time we get a guest on that's calling from Kentucky and parts east, uh, you know, it'll happen again. You bet. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, I'm going to let you guys go because I know that Hot Rod Bob, I know that Alex, and of course you too, Bruce, I know you guys are going to do a great job tonight. But next week I'll be live in studio with tons of coverage from the Great Bend, Kansas Speed Scene Live National. Oh, man. Hey, can't uh, wait to see and hear more about that. We're getting a teaser right now video. And uh, hey, Lucky, welcome back to California, man. We'll see you next week. Thank you, guys. Talk to you later. All right, it's a deal. Yeah. Oh, and uh, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy every little last second of the Speed Scene Live Nationals video here while we, uh, while we get this show going. Because yeah. tonight, of course, now the, the last couple of weeks, Bob and Alex, as you know, um, let's see, a couple of weeks ago, it was Bryant Layton. Brian we had Layton. a special off-road edition of the show. Yeah, I still see the sand on the floor here. I know. Boy, that, it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. There was all sorts of things going on, lots of calling guests and uh, lots of activity here in the studio. And, of course, last week we had uh, everybody from Ray Eddings from One and Done, who's the yeah. producer of the show, to uh, with Dar and Donnie. They were yeah. uh, co-hosting as well. So, Dar, uh, Might, and Donnie. Yeah, that's right. Dar, <laughs> Might, and Donnie. Although, uh, I, I didn't... Uh, Dar, Might's mic mm -hmm. did not have the little red rose on no. it. So. Oh, no. I know. Oh, we got to work on that one. Yeah. yeah we we'll got one for his hair, both of them. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, or for both of their glasses. There, yeah. <laughs> we, yeah no. We'll put buds on his glasses. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you mean to eat your buds, yeah. Are they still going to be red? Do you, you yeah. put black roses on those guys? Uh, you know, I don't know. What does nitro do to flowers? Yeah. I, I, it's got to be black. nitro. I Nothing mean, you know, good. Maybe mm. it played some gold for all I know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so we did so we did off road one week. That's right. The off road report. Then we had the nitro week. That's right. And this week we got plenty of gas. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a whole, uh, it's going to be an entire episode that's uh, right. all connected to the great American auto scene, right? That's right. Gas. I'm Pop Beck. You've got gas for a whole hour <laughs> here on Speed Scene Live. And uh, everybody you know, know, thanks, Bob. Yeah, thanks. You know, we have a good ventilation system here, so that's don't it. worry about it. You do not have to adjust the screen. We, we've got it covered. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Now, yeah. with us tonight, though, we've got one of the premier builders in all of the USA. He built some great cars. I took a tour of the shop today just to to refresh my memory of what that place was like, uh, Troy Ladd from the famous Hollywood Hot Rods. How you doing, Troy? I am doing great. Oh, I get to talk now. Yes, you do. Yes. the wings, yes. and now it's my turn, and now it's ready to talk, so... Yes. All right. Well, what right. is it like in those wings? How is yeah. it over there? Well, the, you know, the green room, I know you have the dancing girls and the food buffet. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's a cocktail lounge. It's pretty lush over here, i got to tell yeah. you, but... Um, I kind of didn't want to come out of the wings. I was getting liquored up over there, but yeah, you know, yeah. now, now we got to do a show. So. Yeah, uh, you know, we, we've yeah. been hearing about you trying to come out of the wings here. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, it's, it's lush enough in here. You can <laughs> turn into a lush if you stay here long enough. Uh, right, now, Troy, you built some exciting cards, and you were called the Builder of the Year last year at one of the premier hot rodding shows here in Southern California. You've got a bunch of projects going on, and uh, we're going to hit some uh, photos of some of the cards. One of my favorite, though, was the Black Widow that you recreated from a model. That that was really an exciting car because uh, that was a monogram model from the late uh, the late fifties early sixties, yeah. and it never existed as a real car. So our client wanted to kind of relive his childhood, but take that toy and create the real thing. Yeah. So you know the neat thing about that is since it never existed, we had the little plastic. You know, car. We would use dial calipers, yeah. measure oh it. My God. You know, you know, multiply it by the scale, and then yeah. try to make it out of out of real metal. That so. is so funny. And I, you, you did a heck of a job of that. <laughs> oh, look, there's I, pictures and there's everything. Pictures. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, do You guys have those. are professional over here. I, oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't we realize use. what I was walking into. This is yeah, fantastic. It scares a lot of people. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you did the black one, and I mean, every detail was correct on that car. You did the proportions right. You, you had to make a couple of compromises, but v- for, very few. I mean, few. yeah, and you know that was part of the the odd, you know, the odd challenges of actually building that car is because a lot of the things that they can do with plastic and a little yeah. model, it doesn't really work in real life. So you kind of have to adjust and change. And um, that's not the Black Widow that's no, on screen that's, now. That's yours. But, um, oh, nice. We'll have to see more <laughs> of that. Um, but that I think that was one of our more kind of more well known builds, just because of uh, so many people really harken back to their youth. Like, oh, I remember building that car. Yeah. I had that model, and you know, when we took that to a show, I got yeah. to hear all day. How yes, <laughs> everyone did it. Now here's the mo- right. here's the box. Yep, that the model came in. Yep, you had a bunch of those around the shop when you were doing the build, and I remember mm-hmm. seeing that. And then you recreated a big. Box top. Oh yeah, that was what was really exciting. Well, there's a couple of things that that, that uh, you know we can make mention about the box top is when they shot the car for the magazine cover. Yeah. Just for fun, they photoshopped the profile of the car. They shot uh-huh. it the same view as that box top, oh, and they overlaid okay. it. And it turned out that our car was so accurate, it literally fit the box, the box top, top without oh. without scaling. So <laughs> they did a centerfold in Rod and Custom magazine, and it was the box top, but with our car. Overlaid and you couldn't tell. Th- that's cool. Did you have uh, actors? You know, uh, did you have a couple of people? You know, with the guy leaning out saying, "Hey, <laughs> no. babe, love that Coke." Well, they actually photoshopped those guys in. That's yeah, no. those, those, those same guys there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, well, I may even have that picture in there someplace. We got a, a, a few pictures on the build of this. And this car. How long did it take you to put this car together? Oh wow! It's been a few years since we finished that car. Um, I think it was probably a. Two-year build or so, which is which isn't too bad considering uh, everything was from scratch. There were no production pieces on this thing for the most part. What? No, I mean we did start with kind of a donor Model T body, but right. most of it was was junk, and we had to recreate most of it. Yeah, um, but you know that was. Um, it was pretty fun. So. Yeah, and I remember when you started the build and uh, watching it as, as it went through. I'd stop by the shop at that time uh, on a regular basis and harass you and, and look at the progress yeah. on it. But uh, uh, it, it comes was a great by, but doesn't spend any money. It just looks around. <laughs> <you know. laughs> 
Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> the fun part. See, isn't see it? there it is under construction. We'll move on to the next. Oh, yeah. those are now, great pictures. Yeah. Now you did. You, yeah. The research. To to where's the research team? Are those guys on the back. Was that they're, those, they're those ten guys on the back ten on the computers? Guys. That's yes. what the, yeah. 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 No. Cool. I, I, you did rewire my hot rod. Mm. Oh, that's right. Oh, you know, a little yeah. bit of history. Yeah. 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 Um, I met I met you when we had just opened that that's place. When I was just it was just whatever. First weeks that the place was open. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, right before we were going to go out of business back then. <laughs> when I'm worrying about uh, how I'm going to survive, sleep on the floor, yeah. and, and, and now, oh man, yeah, and now, and yeah. now you're be man. careful what you wish for, now right? Long, yeah, right, yeah, <laughs> because now you've got a waiting list to get in for uh, work on your on cars. You know. I can't tell you how fortunate I've been through. It's been 11 years, and how fortunate I've been through this process because um, media has really played a large role yeah. in the success of, of what we've done. Because you know, I've had uh, I think to date 160 magazine features and a dozen wow. television shows, and I do appearances and radio and all kinds of different things regularly. And it's what's crazy to me is that people like well, hopefully you guys yeah care what I have to say because yeah. I just build cars, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm living my dream. So, that's oh, that's the car we're doing the, now. This is the, yeah, and this is the actual Hot Rod magazine cover, and it also became a model from Monogram, the Black Widow, and the, now but, but this one the saying, now. Y- mm. You're saying this one became a model after, yeah, yes. Yeah, no, this one was actually a real car in 1959. Oh, okay. Um, and yeah. that's that's a, that's a cover. Of yeah. Hot Rod magazine, they did yeah. a full feature on this particular car. I got Because you. it was one of the first that was really highly detailed and show ready that was also a race car. Dang. Yeah, they, there was kind of a thing, a thing that they were doing. Then they were, they, you know, they wanted to show cars, race cars, and so they would, they would show it. I th- like that one. I think they showed it for a while, and yeah. then they tried to race it, but I think it was a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think to it, keep on the track. Yeah, because it, it was solid mount rear end. Yeah, look, look at the I, in that picture. If you can back up. Yeah. yeah. Look at how the rear end is mounted to the axle. It's just bolted yeah. wow. right to the, oh, to the rear end there. Yeah. So now yeah. you're you're recreating it from both photographs of the real car, <laughs> the original car, and right. the. Model. Model. Correct, and you know the other thing too is we're we're building this one specifically like it was, and you can look at the frame in that picture. Mm-hmm. It's just open C channel with um, quite a few holes and yeah, Swiss cheese. Um, I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure with that is a blown olds with that setup. Yeah. It's just gonna twist. Oh and, yeah, yeah. Um, now, but that back oh, in the day, no one yeah. thought about that, and it was all yeah. let's get it as light as we can to go drag. But racing. plus, you know that that oh, the 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 uh, reality of it back then, those the tire technology was not there, so there was no traction. Right. So they could get away with more than because literally they would would yeah they'd spin know. the tires that was Although, what everyone yeah. did I mean they didn't find out about not spinning the tires so Crispin had a bad clutch mm-hmm. and then he beat everybody and went about 10 miles an hour faster mm-hmm. by not spinning yeah. the tires you know? <laughs> did you see how that we just brought hot rodding back into, <laughs> into the, the into yeah, the drag race thing just wanted to show everybody yeah. that said yeah, I can be a team done. player and that's you know. it that's <laughs> right? no, I brought it back the real grasshopper or whatever what was it called when it was it was the it was the it was the Green the Hornet? grasshopper when yeah. it was a real car, and then Monogram called it uh, the Green Hornet. The Green Hornet. Yeah, we call it the grasshopper because we don't want people to think we're building a silly car from that. The uh, movie. The, the yeah. Movie. yeah. Okay. Yeah, now, um, do you know what happened to the real car? No, I I talked to a guy. I met a guy at dinner, and he knew a guy who knew a guy, yeah. and they <laughs> swore that none of the car was left except for the grill shell, and that guy had it, and I tried to buy it, and he was angry that. He, someone told someone you? even asked yeah somebody even Aww. asked um, but but here this is a really cool piece of information is the and the guy in those pictures named John Garrity mm-hmm. and it was Garrity and Crawford were the two guys that built that car okay. um, John Garrity it turns out lives about four blocks from me <laughs> in here in Burbank well he's Why on the Glendale know? side I'm, I'm in Burbank okay. and um I want to, when the car's done, maybe take it to a street and do a burnout in front of his house or something. Oh, <laughs> no. No. Uh, just to uh, show him, well, I guess. Uh, I want. I would be nice. He would. He would come to see it. Yeah. But from what I understand, he has no interest in cars. He doesn't want to talk about cars. He's oh. just kind of. Th- yeah, but you know what? I bet once he sees that thing, that's he would rekindle it. it. You know what? Any true car guy, you yeah. can't just throw it away. It's no. gonna, it's it gonna, lives in you. Yeah, exactly. No. It's, a, it's a sickness, really. Now, <laughs> now here's a car. That, this car, you uh, featured, it was featured at the Grand National Roadster Show this last Yeah, oh, that's cool hair I got going. Yeah, there, there you go. Nice, yeah. A little under there. <laughs> now, you, you um, shop, the metal work that comes out of your shop, you don't do Bondo 
things like some famous customizer that we <laughs> all hear about. <laughs> oh, uh, your, yours is true oh. metalwork. I mean, you can look at the cards. I, I was looking at the card you're working on today in the shop that we don't know about. That uh, from the outside, you can't see any welds, you can't see any body work, but you look on the inside where you haven't finished it off yet. And you can see where the welds were. You oh, did, that's a good picture. Yeah, that's a great picture. Because it shows cow. the stitching. It shows cool. how you chop the top, the added piece, and then what it looked like at the finish, where you can't tell. And that's the neat thing is we've kind of crossed over. Your t and the, the the secret car you're talking about is a, a prototype. Um, Packard looking car that's very mm -hmm. Art Deco that we're going to do either for oh, nice. Riddler or Amber mm -hmm. or one of those um, you know big scale shows. But w that car and and you know some of the, the evolution of cars like this, it's a process. We start to move over from modifying and customizing into yeah. coach building. Yeah. And that that prototype car is we're calling it eighty percent coach built mm -hmm. because literally we're building a car from drawings just from blank pieces right. of steel. Like we have drawings and a stack of steel and we end and up with a car. It, yeah. Build yeah. a car from that. Now yeah. here's that 40 that yeah. we just showed the, ch the top chopped on and, and it, it flows. It doesn't look like a radical top chop well, like we see some people do. Well it's here's like, the deal with it. Oh. Go yeah, ahead. I was just going right. to say, you know, the typical Joe, me, I, I'm fairly familiar with his body, and yet I would mm -hmm. say, no, that, that top isn't sharp, because it's so smoothly done. Well, he, here's the thing, and here's and the problem right, um, that really, I think we cross over from, I into the artistic end of things, too, is it's about proportions and shapes and yeah. things like that, and I think that we've been, uh, I've been pretty good at creating uh, an artistic style that people recognize and keeping mm -hmm. proportions correct. So a car like that, that was a uh, a promotional car for Street Rider magazine. It's the Road Tour car. Right. So that was the very first aftermarket 40 Ford steel body. Um, ah, and okay. so they gave that to us, and they gave us a chassis. My guys are still so... They're car guys, and they're mm -hmm. so attached to the excitement of the creativity of what we do. When we got those pieces from the magazine, they said, okay, build us our Road Tour car for the year. We're going to publicize it, and it'll be a great promo deal for everybody. My guys looked at it and said... Why are we going to put that body on that chassis and not show the world that we can do something creative? Yeah. yeah. So they wanted to chop it. And and I think, Bob, you'll understand where I'm coming with the, the, the statement that, in my opinion, you don't chop a 40. <laughs> Yeah. You leave 40s alone. Yeah. Um, that's kind of one of the rules uh, in, in hot rodding, I think, but... And you know, long story short, or long story longer. In my yeah. case, uh, <laughs> I, uh, um, we did a one and a quarter inch chop and just changed the flow lines of the mm -hmm. car to not create a custom forty, but create a better forty. Yeah. So and you, you brought the proportions in. It doesn't look like. And at that point in time, uh, the manufacturers were making tall roofs mm -hmm. because you sat in a couch. You didn't sit in a car. Well, and you wore a right. hat, correct? Yeah. Most, most yeah. guys wore well, a hat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, th there, we we talked about the days of uh, a particular manufacturer where they were going to build this nice little sporty pony car but because the president of the company couldn't fit in with his hat it became a big bulbous car that no one wanted to buy hmm. instead of the pony car that was supposed to be. Um, but we won't talk about AMC and the Marlin and the uh, uh, the Tarpon. Uh, but the Tarpon was you know, <laughs> the size of a, of a Camaro Mustang and Barracuda at the time. And then it became a Marlin, became which the was Marlin, much larger. Which was right. based on the Rebel, which was the big car. I wish I from drag racing <laughs> to hot rodding to fishing and, yeah, and ponies and uh, <laughs> all ponies sorts and of things. Yeah. And Marlin and Barracuda. What's the Hyundai that's named after a shark? The Tiburon. The Tiburon, yeah. I think that's a shark. Yeah, wow. that's the guy who sold it to him. Very impressive, Bruce. <laughs> 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 who else had fish cars? Oh, let's see. We'll oh. get way late here. It's on Barracuda. The Barracuda. And you did a special on Barracuda. We did a special just on Barracuda. We did the, the special on the first generation Barracuda because that was the real Barracuda. That's right. With a 14 cubic foot rear window. Yeah. <laughs> so that's some glass, baby. So much anyone. knowledge. Oh, that yeah. You have. <laughs> the Hemi under glass. And stuff. But now, back to the hot rods. Back to the hot rods. Now, yeah, hot rods. Hot rods. now Here's a great car, and I remember seeing this stored in the oh. back of your shop. This is your girlfriend's car. Yep. What? Yeah. Yep. Um, this is the world's most expensive Comet. Yeah. <laughs> this is a that's a three thousand dollar car that has one hundred and fifty grand in it. Yeah. Um, ah. um, the the idea behind this um, was well, again, yeah, like Bob said, that thing had been sitting in the back of our yard for about the last ten years. Yeah. Um, she bought that fifteen years ago. Um, she loves that car. She drove it to law school, and um, then we we moved from Orange County to L.A. and it just sat in my backyard. So. 
Uh, I've been doing stuff with Ford. I do. Um, we were the first to ever have a Ford Coyote engine, the new 5.0 TFECT mm-hmm. uh, that are in the new Mustangs. Um, I got one of those, and Roush got one, and one other person got them a few years before they released. So um, that, with my connection with Ford, I created fuel injection and things for that engine for a hot rod. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, application. I had an extra Coyote engine laying around from that they had given rolling up. We did some mm-hmm. drawings and like, you know what? It would really be nice to do something odd for SEMA and who's built mm-hmm. a 63 Comet convertible as a full hot rod? Not nobody that I know of. So no. that's how that evolved. And um, then we had, uh, once the pictures, the renderings leaked out, you know, those pictures there, I got all kinds of other sponsors on board and we did an unveil at SEMA and it was uh, it's pretty cool. Did people yeah. love it? People love it. And uh, love Davida it. loves it too. Yep, and which is more important. Doesn't matter yeah. about the people, right? right? Indeed. <laughs> I mean, you know. But this was a, this was a complete, the only thing that stayed almost stock and nothing ever gets untouched by you Whoa. is the body. The no, that's basic lines the, the body. Yeah, there's one and, coyote one. And Whoa. the body is changed a little bit too, but yeah. but what's interesting about how I've evolved at least our style of hot rod building mm-hmm. is you'll never see crazy purple flamed, yeah. you know, billet uh, mm. you know, wheeled cars come out of my shop. We do really try to do more elegant um, um, simple. simple. Yeah. I mean, the, the mm. lines on that car are great. So we try to accentuate the good lines and just get rid of stuff I don't like. Yeah. So we end up doing we do so much more work than you would imagine to make things look simple. Well, you also make them look production to it. And not that, that not production in a bad way, but you make it look like that is the way the car oh, should have been built. Right. Yeah, there's your SEMA display and the car is gorgeous. Cool. Uh, you've got the Coyote motor in it. You've got fuel injection. Like you said, you, you made mm-hmm. it. It looks like Eight different stacks. Do you have a picture of that? Right? Yeah, I do. It, it'll, it should be coming up so shortly. Yeah, well, well maybe car. not. <laughs> well, that's a different car right there. <laughs> now, this one was the. Totally this is, yeah, that, that was the basis of another car that we'll talk about that uh, you did for Ray Bestus. Uh, that one was, I think that frame was actually a, a car to race La Carrera Panamericana in right. Mexico. That's what that one was for. Ray Bestus was, oh, okay. uh, get a different Yeah, one. that's right. Okay. But, you know, some of the neat challenges about that, the um, Comet, was it's, uh, it's a unibody construction mm-hmm. and f- fitting the Coyote engine and the electronic transmission and all that was a little bit of a mm-hmm. challenge, but we also wanted to lay the thing on the ground, um, and I didn't want to put it on a frame. So we re-engineered a lot of the unibody structure under Underneath, um, with you know that the, you can see airbags and rack and pinion right. steering and all that, but it's not a frame. That's still the unibody substructure that we reinforced and re-engineered. Um, and we thought it would be a neat challenge to not just cut up the floor, put it on a chassis. Mm-hmm. We thought it would be nice to. Uh, pay homage to what Ford designed. You can see the back. There's huge yeah. wheel tubs. Right. Um, so <laughs> again, know, re, re, re-engineered again. the unibody structure yeah. and all the torque boxes and things that come on a convertible to make it lay on the ground and be structurally sound and hold that engine. And I'm stunned that you were able to find room under that hood for that motor. But you know, I always thought everybody's got a personal opinion on the uh, well on any car. But <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I always thought the Comet. Which shared uh, at least part of its uh, body panels, maybe just the doors or something or other, and, uh, and then it's you know a, Falcon, a huge yeah. amount of the substructure. Yeah, I thought it was a prettier car than the Falcon of the same year. Well, Mercury's okay. were they were a higher line vehicle. They had more more detail to them. Yeah, well, if you ask my girlfriend, it's cute and has fins. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, and see the comment where the, uh, <laughs> the Falcon did not have fins that year. That's right. kind of what it I, I never liked. Off. I never really liked the Falcon how it kind of just just rolled off in the back. It yeah. looked like its butt was kind of saggy. Yeah, right? well, in the front kind of rolls off yeah, too. Yeah. As the yeah. Comet's got those quad headlamps, you know, yeah. it's got a little more stance up front. It had more style. This is the S22, which was their version, uh, their Highline version, and Falcon sort of like a Futura. I think. Yeah, kind of yeah. like the Futura, but the the Comet actually. Uh, with the S22 was a little fancier. As with all Mercury's, they were fancier than the standard Ford's. Yeah, I think that was the. I think the S22 was a sport package. Yeah, yeah. You could get on the coupe, or the, and it was it was pretty much like the Futura was in the early years, and then it became what the Sprint was, mm-hmm. and then the Cyclone came out, and then Mercury really went wild with stuff that that the Falcons didn't get, but you know Ford didn't promote, you know, kind of like GM did with Buick. It's, it was the stodgier. The, the the marketing was towards the older buyer. That's and that's right. Bob the Encyclopedia. Thank yes. You. That's right. There we go. <laughs> well, and, and now Mercury is gone. Yes, it is. Oh. And we, we still have Buick. 
<laughs> hey, so you yes. guys started to talk about this bare frame, the the artist's yeah. rendering here. Well, that that is actually um, a tube bending program that I have, and so I was drawing uh, the basic structure so that I could use that to do a uh, a layout of for the tube bending machine. Well, I mean, it's not a machine; we do it by hand, but you still we have a printout that we can bend, and that was the basis for um, a car that. We started from a blank sheet of paper, and the owner said, what if I could race a, a Model A pickup truck at the La Carrera Panamericana <laughs> mm-hmm. with a flathead? So um, this is what we came up with. So we built an all chrome tube chassis, and it's literally, it's actually, I'm going to bring this back to drag racing. Yeah. Um, oh, nice, it's, nice. it's literally built like a, you know, a modern drag car where the body panels are really not part of the structure at all. They kind of pop on or bolt on, and we have a, a skeleton of a car in chrome tubing um, with all the safety, safety requirements to um, compete in that. Now, where event. did you find the Arden heads? Um, those were, I think, uh, gosh, who's not Donna Roscoe, but the other guy, uh, Bruce Meyer. No, there's a there's a guy that he reproduced the heads, um, the intake, and a few of the the pieces. Oh, gosh, I knew a Roscoe did it, but I didn't know someone else. Did well, it. Roscoe originally was was working on the castings, the machining right. for those, and he handed it off or sold it oh, off okay. to. Um, I can't think of his name right now. I'm sorry, but That's he's he's so pretty well known. Yeah, yeah, and yell at me. <laughs> I'll think of it after you leave the but show. But the funny thing is that, that really a car like that really messes with the heads of, of race car people yeah. because and Bob, you'll you'll be able to chime in. Like that engine, there's probably fifty grand in that engine. Yeah. And it makes Two hundred and eighty horsepower. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Aww. What do you do? <laughs> it's, it's right? all, yeah, it's all it's relative. Cute. Yeah, I mean, think about it's it. Cute. No, it's cute. <laughs> it's cute. There we go. That's all right, we got the definition. Of it. Just <laughs> that was a Hemi before your car had a Hemi. Oh, I'm I. I didn't mean any offense. <laughs> That's by all right. What I we'll said. get even. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get even. Oh boy. I'm all right. We now. Got, we've got some commercials we've got to go to. Take a little bit of a break. We'll be back in just a few minutes with more gas on Speed Scene Live. Troy and Alex, the car girl. This is John Metajastic, sometimes called the Magic Man, sometimes called that guy in the tower at Bakersfield. And when I'm not talking there, I'm watching Speed Scene Live. For over half a century, Curry rear-end components have been twisting out the torque and taking the punishment. And the new Curry lineup is stronger than ever. Some of the world's most capable, hardest-working vehicles depend on Curry gears, which is why you can, too. Street cars, hot rods and resto rods, drag cars, rock-crawling four-wheel drive vehicles, whatever you're piloting, Curry expertise and rock-solid design means the parts will do their job so you can do yours. Check out Curry's custom rear ends, featuring a full line of upgrades, components, and installations options. The Curry Crate Rear Ends lineup offers ultra-strong construction on third members and carrier assemblies. And other underside parts, like correct link steering systems, keep your four-wheeler pointed where you want it. Add in a wide variety of solid, purpose-built suspension and brake components, and you've got one tough, ready-to-go machine. Grab a hold of a Curry Rear End. Talk to the experts at 714-367-2679 or view the complete line online at curryenterprises.com. TV show brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, MH Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, and TheFoat.com. Well, welcome back. I'm Bob Beck, and you've got gas for an hour here tonight on Speed yeah. Scene Live. And we're going to give you a short video on that Troy did an interview with, and it's taken at his shop so you get to see things live on almost. Um, really, my goals for the shop and the brand and inspiration is I, I really have kind of uh, attached this to art. I mean, I think that 
that everyone that works here is an artist and that uh, my designs and things, it's more of an art. So um, I don't want to just kind of build something, a normal thing, and pump out cars and make money. I, mean, I, I should want to make money, but I'm really more concerned about the artistic direction of the builds and trying to do something new and unique and really make a mark on the industry. So really artistic expression is the inspiration and the goals to push forward. Um, I opened Hollywood Hot Rods uh, 2002 and it was just kind of a culmination of building cars as a hobby for so many years and at some point just not being happy working for the man, you know, working a day job. So I ended up deciding let's create a company, create the brand, create the image and quit the day job and do a, you know, live the dream. <laughs> I think one of the pivotal factors in the fact that we've continued to grow through whatever economic times and things that have happened is I truly believe that if you take care of people, that things, what comes around goes around. So I always take care of people. And if it's a car that we really like or the design is something that I'm excited about, we end up putting so much more effort and design into something that you know, we never even get, I really never get my money back for what we do. I think, you know, you take care of people and you do the right thing, um, things come back to you, so. With our projects, they're so unique, we end up making so much stuff. Like, we don't buy a lot of off-the-shelf stuff, but when we do, um, there's a few companies that come to mind. Like, we use a lot of Fat Man stuff to convert early cars to independent suspension. Um, on, like, engine side, we use comp cams uh, stuff for, you know, camshafts and popping up our engines. And then Fast, I can't tell you how many times I've used Fast, because I do a lot of hidden fuel injection stuff. And I always use their ECU. So yeah, this is a 2011 uh, Ford Coyote engine. So what we've done is with a lot of the, like a lot of comp camps uh, stuff and fast and our own fabricated stuff, we can take this engine and turn it into something that looks a whole lot more hot rod oriented. You know, less plastic, just cool. I mean, it's almost like Indy car type stuff. You know, in the, in the short term that I've been doing this, in the 10 years we've been doing that, every car and everything that we do has just exceeded the, the, the previous. And we're doing a car currently that's uh, going to compete in Riddler or Amber or one of those kind of events that's almost entirely coach built, handmade metal from drawings, um, shaped from nearly nothing. And that's such a far stretch from just modifying cars and building hot rods. So I think. I'm really looking forward to continuing that kind of you know, direction in the build. It's just the art grows and grows. So if you want to see more and kind of keep updated with us, our website is hollywoodhotrods.com. And stay tuned. There's a lot to see. Yeah, you got to check out the website. <laughs> you do. And take a look at some of the cars, the builds. And if you're ever in beautiful downtown Burbank, well, stop over and see Troy's. Now, you're, you're not open traditional five days a week. No, we're, uh, we're Tuesday through Friday currently, hmm. at 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Cool, late Four hours. Tens. Yeah. That's going to be yeah. Yeah. Alex, why don't you tell us a little bit about the, how your car could fit into a Hollywood Hot Rod scenario? <laughs> oh, no, uh, huh? <laughs> not not really. I, I I've just been terrible. admiring all of your your excellent work. Do you do your own paint in house? We do not do paint okay. or, or upholstery. Um, okay. Yeah, so pretty much everything else. Okay. But you use some of the top guys in that industry when it gets done. So it is amazing. Yeah, it, it's it's a lot of those. Are, you have to you know collaborate with others, and especially like on the upholstery, we use uh, this guy uh, Mark Lopez uh, mm -hmm. his name, with Elegance Auto Interiors, and he, he. I like people that I can really work with that kind of have that that artistic vision as well. It's not when I take a you know car for upholstery or even paint. It's not okay. Do this and I'll pay you. It's mm -hmm. like this is the vision. This is the feel of the build. What do you think? What can you mm -hmm. add to this? So mm -hmm. it's a collaborative process, not just one direction do this yeah and, and you know and even my whole kind of my whole business is built on that idea mm -hmm. as well i don't pretend that i'm the greatest hot rod builder in the whole world personally but i have 
the people that I hire in my shop and the guys that work with me, I use all of their creative input and their skills. And as a team, I do believe that you know yeah. <laughs> we're pretty good. It all pretty comes good. together because yeah. we all yeah. you know work together, and that's that's. And, and, very and that impressive. was something I identified early on is is I didn't want it to be Troy led Hollywood Hot Rods, and I would bring in people, especially my guys and things that um, we can work together and do amazing things. Yeah, I remember hanging around there one day when you were doing the Cars for Rides, the TV show. You are mm-hmm. doing the two uh, 32s. Frenchie, I forgot his real name. Well, Chris. Chris. Yeah. But we just called him Frenchie. And he did amazing lead work. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, th- that was what we were doing then, and he did do great wet lead work and body work and metal work, but now mm-hmm. we're able to do it even without filler at all. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, it's, it's the whole, this whole thing is an evolution, both artistically and skill set. Wise and I'm, um, you know, sometimes I wonder when we when we finish this this Packard project if I'm just gonna have to quit because I don't know if, what I can do after that. But then <laughs> when, yeah. when it, just How when I thought I couldn't, that? yeah, just when yeah. I thought I couldn't top it, we have drawings for a little indie style roadster built from stainless and aluminum, oh, which will be pretty cool. Man, so. right. I'm I'm yeah. stunned that you you know it's I'm an old car guy, but I will repair it however I can sort of get away with it because <laughs> <laughs> sometimes of course, you know, having having a good shop is really important, a place you can work. And I I just weld outside and I hope the grass doesn't catch on fire. But uh, <laughs> if it does, you what? don't have to cut it that yeah. That saves yeah. money on the gardener. <laughs> yeah, it's just maybe I should forget the welding blanket. I'll yeah. just singe everything. Singe everything. It'll, yeah, 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 it'll be like a laser hair treatment for the yard. Yeah, yeah don't you like the color of my new grass? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like a really hot summer, man. <laughs> but uh it's, anyway, the the fact that you guys like chopping the top on that 40 coupe and and not using filler is like yeah. that's tremendous. Now it's it's a little bit of um well, I don't want to by not using filler, there's still a little. I yeah. mean, there's always some for the blocking. Yeah. You know, you got to block and shape and do your finish work before paint. Yeah. So I don't want people someone to call and say, oh, "I know there's some bondo on there." <laughs> there there is, but it's it's not using it in the traditional ways as filling voids. <laughs> you know, we're using it yeah. to to fill minor imperf- imperfections yeah. and, you know, use it as a as a Basis. Yeah, I, I remember going over to one of the custom shops that was in the San Fernando Valley a decade, a couple of decades ago, and beautiful Buick, and they had it down to the metal. I thought, okay, now you're just going to prime it and sand it and smooth it. And next thing I know, I come over the next day and he ordered ten gallons of Bondo, and huh. the whole car was skinned in Bondo. And he shaped it. It had scoops in the hood that weren't there in metal. <laughs> wow, so they just, they just oh. made parts out of bond. That's oh, it. No. They shaped it. Uh. And it was, you know, I, I, if you hit a bump too quickly, the body would have fallen off with the paint. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's more common than you think. I've, I've yeah. heard of a lot of shops that will make uh, body lines and reveal mm-hmm. lines and things, and it's easier just to shape them in, in Bondo. Yeah, yeah, because we all played with clay when we were younger, and that's basically the same thing you do. It just yeah. hardens. You know? <laughs> all right, now let's take a little bit of a break from hot rodding and Alex you've been yes. drag racing you've been taking your Mopar out tell us a little bit about your Magnum and its exploits uh, lately the Magnum has been sort of offline a little bit um, we drove to Vegas at the beginning of this month and um, literally arrived in the parking lot of Las Vegas Motor Speedway only to have the rear end oh. kind of break a, a bit <laughs> well at least you so got there right we got there She, uh, she, sh- the, the car's amazing she chooses the most opportune moments to break I mean it's never <laughs> in the middle of the desert. It's always when we're safe and sound somewhere that we can get to shelter. Okay. So, um, <laughs> uh, basically, you know, we upgraded the rear end of the car to handle somewhere between 500 and 600 horsepower, but right. 800 was pushing it a bit, and mm. that's that's what the new motor from Arrington Performance is making, and, you know, I, I can't, you know, praise them enough for that, but the rear end was was ready to go, and it, and it finally did. So, we are in the process of rebuilding it. We're getting a nine-inch um, independent rear independent kit. Rear. Yep, yep, exactly. <laughs> Tough. Um, Wave Track is going to be participating on the limited slip, and the center section is going to be from okay. Strange, and it's just going to be the most bulletproof. <laughs> yeah, but um, amazing. Yeah, drive shaft shop has really, really come through. We're getting their axles and their drive shaft, and I really just can't wait to race it again because it's been, it feels like it's been forever. It's been a couple races since I've been able to race the car. I've been boring other people's cars. I mean, <laughs> everyone's been so gracious, but, you know, at Isn't the end of the funny? month. Isn't it amazing when race? 
season comes and you say, oh, it's been a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> God, I'm oh, dying here. So I know. Yeah. I feel like it's been forever. <laughs> she misses the 105 degrees in Vegas already. Oh, I yeah. wish it was. It's going to be like 113, 14 yeah. this, this weekend. Keep the ice packs for the fuel injection Yeah, system. there you go. Hey, by the way, Thomas yes. Moore calls in, uh, one, one of our regular Speed Scene Live viewers, and he says, now we just solved his issue. He said, you got to give Alex the car girl more airtime or oh, else uh, people are just going to you know, stop oh. watching the show. Oh, so look no. at that. That's we just solved nice. another yeah. huge problem right here live on TV. <laughs> now, you know, one of the things that people may not, if you've not talked to or seen Alex Royce before, she drives the car to the track towing the trailer. This car does not go on the trailer. It tows the trailer. That's right. And the spare parts go in that. Now, short, about two months ago, the first time you had, we had you on the show, you relocated the drive shaft <laughs> around Apple Valley, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, we were we were coming into Victorville and um you know, we've been having a few problems with the rear end. The the rear end before and the whole suspension was stock and we just replaced um, all of the bushings with white line suspension parts by the way please go to moparmax.com to check out the excellent article on that upgrade um, but we were having a couple problems with the drive shaft you know it's just things break on race cars it's just the way it is and you know we, mm -hmm. we got we got a little bit stranded and we had to <laughs> tow the trailer and the car on a flatbed all the way down to Anaheim to Unitrax Drive Train our, our rear end sponsor and get that whole thing taken care of but you know what it's a process it's a journey yeah, it's now, the way things are and I love it perspective you had a car that put out about 250 275 horsepower new oh no 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 no, no, no. no pop well, no, when, it come first, on. when it was first built from the factory. From from the factory, it yeah. made 425 horsepower. Is that That's what SRTs the are doing rated. now? Yes, it was a 6.1 liter Hemi. Oh, um, cow. Yep, it was rated at 425 horsepower from the factory. Wow. And I'm schooled. Supercharged, yeah. <laughs> it made about 600 at the crank. And now we uh, swapped the engine with an Arrington Performance built Mopar with. Um, you know, forged internals, and now it makes somewhere around 800, about 670 at the wheels. But the amazing part is, again, you drive this on the street. Yeah, it's it's a completely street legal car. I mean, there's um, there's uh, Headman Headman headers has participated on it. We've got. Um, Air conditioning, sunroof, navigation. Yeah, er everything works. I mean, this isn't yep. a gutted race car. This has got full interior air conditioning. You listen to the stereo on the way down the strip. Uh, you know, <laughs> everything's going on. And you're no, running, you've run the, the quickest you ran was 1098 so far. And that was because you were spinning the tires. Yeah, the car is capable. I'm positive of a 1070 or 1060. The car just right now has been having trouble with traction, but we're working on that. We've got lots of upgrades. We'll be talking about that more and more as they become, you know, actual reality on the on the car. We're working on all the details right now, but hopefully at the next race we'll be able to get the tires to stick. Indeed. <laughs> now, when do you expect the car to be back on the track? Next race? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. next race um, is... July, uh, June 29th and 30th, okay. I think. All right, so um, you only have two weeks to go. Yeah. And we're we're going to be driving to Vegas a week from today to start, you know, cutting and welding and bolting and doing whatever we can <laughs> to get the rear end back in the car and on the track on Friday night, Tess and Tune. All so. right. So you got a heavy and you run strong. Uh, <laughs> Vegas is the next race. What race is that? It's the ET Bracket Series for NHRA. Okay, so it's Summit Series. Yeah, it's the Summit Series, although Vegas, for some reason, doesn't call it that. Oh. Um, well, it, they they call it the ET Bracket Series, but it still counts toward the same um, Division 7 points toward the ET Finals at the end of the year. And okay, where do you stand in the points right now? I believe I'm 8th currently. Um, there's a lot of pro cars this year. There's, there's, <laughs> it's not bad. Nice. There's no, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Man. Come <laughs> Thank on. you. I'm z zeroeth. <laughs> yes, you are. So. Zeroeth. Well, there's 70 cars in pro, and um, I'm eighth right now. But there's two throwaway races, so you know, your worst two races are thrown away. So it's, yeah. it's hard to say the points places until the end of the year comes right because yeah it's yeah. moving all the time people say well you know that was my worst race right like, yeah. no it wasn't your your your, your worst race is coming up i thought yeah, yeah, yeah. your worst <laughs> race is the next one against me yeah. That's what it is. Exactly, exactly exactly 
Yeah. Well, geez, man, hopefully the car's back on the road quick because we absolutely have to see not only more footage of it here on Speed Team yes. Live, but we got to see more. Uh, you know, you walking in after one of those crazy <laughs> runs like you get yeah. in Vegas is like, a, we're back. It's time for Speed Team Live. You know, man. maybe I should film something and That's do it. some sort of intro at the track right after one of those yeah, awesome passes. That'd be great. Get, that. get a shot of the burnout and leaving, and then the scoreboards with that 1090. 1090, yeah. 1080, 1080, maybe. Yeah, yeah. optimistic. Well, you know, with that new Ford 9-inch independent rear suspension, you know. You know? And bigger yeah. slicks. and yeah. mm, Let's hope so. Maybe Let's it's going to stick. Indeed. Let's hope. Indeed. All right. Back to Troy now. Troy, what other new things have you got coming out of your shop? Uh, well, let's see. Well, what would be you know, maybe, maybe I can, uh, maybe maybe I can, can pull tweak it up. Okay. Now, we were talking about this car, and we kind of yeah. got halfway uh, through it. Oh, yeah, the Pan America car. That's right. There's now actually there's structure on this show. It's awesome. Yes, oh, yeah. we try. Very little. <laughs> wow. I mean, we, you know, we're trying. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I'd go far. Now, here's the <laughs> It's, like, <laughs> it's jello as opposed to uh, yeah. helium. Yeah. <laughs> it's a we, moving target. <laughs> that's the one. Now, we showed the drawing that you were doing on the computer. Uh-huh. This is what it came I, you know, a couple of more bars in the canary will never get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had spe- specific safety requirements that we had to build for, and um, you know, the, the owner had to be comfortable. And there was a lot of, you know, well, the Arden it has an Arden that has a setback in it. There's a lot of really oddball things that was designed into yeah. that particular car. So, um, again, I, I th- really enjoy kind of these unique challenges to problems. Where okay, it needs to be, it needs to be cool. It needs yeah. to be a Model A. It, we need to run a, a blown, uh, you know, blown Arden headed flathead, <laughs> and it's got a f- race. And it's yeah. got to be. <laughs> it's got to stay together. And, yeah. and it has to fly. I mean, it has you to might as well add that in there. Why not? Yeah. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. bang. Yeah. Exactly. Style. Yeah. I, still, I lost you way back on the 280 horsepower and 50 grand thing, right? Exactly. <laughs> 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 like, that's what I always wonder with a car like that. What would what would that kind of money do to, I mean, I hate mm. to say it, but even like a small block. I mean, you'd have oh, yeah. 2,000 horsepower, right? Oh, yeah. oh gosh. Yeah. If but but flathead is cool. But yeah, see, that's yeah. the thing. You pay for cool. Yeah, yeah. you pay for All right, cool. Now, if someone oh. goes into your shop, mm-hmm. they want a hot rod built. What is, let's say, an average time to build a something like this? Two, something <laughs> like that. They, you know what? That, that, that's that the, is the start of one of the cars. That's the start of the Black Widow from earlier. Oh, is that right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. that was the donor vehicle. Yeah. Um, how, let's say a thirty-two high boy. Well, how it would how it works is. Um, you would you'd meet me. We talk. We sit yeah. down and talk, and we would kind of brainstorm ideas. And mm-hmm. as as long as you kind of know what our artistic design direction is, mm-hmm. um, and we're on board, we would do designs. We it would. That's kind of the fun part. Is mm-hmm. you, you kind of get to bench build, and we yeah. throw ideas, throw throw parts at at you know uh, at our project. And a lot of times we do. Most of the time we do drawings, so we can do drawings and we can render the car, and you can see what's going to be. And then we start ordering parts and, and move move ahead. Um, depending on the level of of you know detail and the level of you know creativity on a car, they go anywhere from six months to four years. You ever have anybody walk in with a completed drawing, just you know done, and says, "I want you guys to build this." Um, well, like the Black Widow. Yeah, yeah. 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 Here's, here's the model box. Let's build the car. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we, we have, um, and you know the neat thing about it is, is that at this point, most people. Oh, that was my car from a few years yeah. back. Uh-huh. Um, the uh, most people know what our design aesthetic is and what my artistic like visions for hot riding is. So usually, the people that we work with. I, I, to me, it's important that it's it's really a relationship, and I want mm-hmm. people to be involved. I want you to come in. I want to sit down. I want to hang out with you. I want you to see your car happening, because I think it's kind of silly, people that have a car built. Like, okay, I'll build you the car. You write me a check. I mean, there needs to yeah. be interaction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's supposed to be exciting and fun. You know, the whole build process. If it's not. You know, well, well, and why I, you doing it? And, you know, I, I you, this goes back and forth too. But you know, money can basically buy anything. But you know, you, you talk to some guys at car shows, especially who are going. Uh, you know, something will drive by and go, "Oh yeah, that guy is his first time wheeling it. It's his first time even touching the car. He just paid some somebody else to build the whole thing, and you know, it was total hands off. And you know, there's a place for that. Yeah. But you know, a lot of us do love to to be very hands on because mm-hmm. it's I don't know, cars are personal in a lot of ways, and yes. it's it's your baby, man. And this is your personal car right here. Yep, your that 32. was my car. And that this this car was actually I think one of the pivotal 
uh, points in the Hollywood Hot Rods evolution. Because um, this was a signature car that I dreamed of. This was my vision. And we ran it in America's Most Beautiful Roadster um, competition in, in the um, um, Roadster Show in Pomona. And it ended up being a milestone car to some extent within the industry because we actually changed the direction of where high-end cars were going a little bit, which was kind of cool. I'm I'm flattered when people tell me that. I was just building what I wanted to build. (laughs) Um, But that is an all, you know, pretty much all hand-built you know, 32 Roadster, but it's it's been sectioned two inches. The wheel wells are moved. Every piece of metal in every dimension has been moved slightly. Jeez. Again, like we talked about earlier, not dramatically, but slightly. And that gives an overall more aesthetic and streamlined appeal. And um, that has every bit of the coach building and handwork that, you know, like a Boyd or a Foose, one of the, you know, a, mm-hmm. a digital billet wheeled type car, where at the time that was the, yeah. you know, where the hot rodding was at. Sure. And my point was to go to America's Most Beautiful Roadster and bring in a traditional looking car with all of the detail and all of the handwork as, you know, one of those high-tech cars. And since then, cars have started going back to the traditional style yeah. rather than the billet, you know. Yeah, I, a prime example is this year's winner. It was a, a Model T with a V860 Arden. Oh, yeah. I mean, beautiful car. and Mumford. And yeah. John Mumford, uh, yeah. you know, and... Um, that was a that's a fantastic car. It is beautiful. I was looking at it after uh, LA Roadster this weekend. It's on display now and will be at the NHRA Museum in Pomona. Mm-hmm. They've got it as the main car as you walk in the door. And oh. NHRA is what? Uh, <laughs> ah, good one. Hot Rod Association. <laughs> All right. I think yep. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. Trying to bring it back. Yeah. Bringing it back. Yeah. See? Yeah. 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 There we go. <laughs> so, but but hot rodding is definitely the start of drag racing as well. It is. If you go back to the beginning of uh, the logo even for NHRA it was a 32 high boy yep. and Wally Park came from Hot Rod Magazine, was a writer for them and uh, Brian Bonneville ran Daytona when Daytona had the speed week there actually on the on the uh, beach <laughs> and he took a 60 Plymouth out there and <laughs> as a little bit of a segue yes. like drag racing, hot rod right. for me, for what, uh, what I like in my designs is I like cars like that car that was mm-hmm. just up on the screen, my car um, I like the functional roots of drag racing land speed, things like that in my designs I don't really have an interest in the kind of the Barris show car direction yeah. of hot rodding mm-hmm. I like mm-hmm. f- things that yeah. kind of look functional, even the yeah. 40 we're talking about with the chop, that car is supposed to look purpose built, sleeker, like you could drive it, you can. Yeah. I mean we raced that thing yeah. um, we had that, that 40 actually does um, road course, which is wow. that's wow, a whole other story, know. that's Man, a story for another day that that well. really. we yeah. can do that yeah, yeah you're, for, you're not form over function it's got to function, the form's got to follow and flow with the function of it. Yeah, it, you know, my car, um, the the Hemi that's in my car, uh-oh, I hear music. No. Nah, yeah. oh. uh, the Hemi, that that car was, a, that um, engine was originally slated to go in the Rat Trap, which was a drag car in right. the 60s. The altered. Yep, and that was one of the engines that was going to go in the car. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in just a moment with more gas on Speed Scene Live. Troy Ladd and Alex the Car Girl. I'm Phil Burkhart, and you're watching Speed Scene Live. M&H Tires, makers of racing tires that give you the best bite for the buck. You've paid a lot for that horsepower. Make sure you use it all. M&H Tires has the best compounds available for maximum traction. Go to mandhtires.com. That's m-a-n-d-h-tires.com. Buy direct and save at the website and mention the speed scene for a 5% discount. That's right, mnhtires.com. Call them at 661 324 4773. MH Tires has tech guides ready to answer your questions or to recommend the best tire for you. Slicks or DOT. MH Tires has it all. MH were the first to create racing tires for muscle cars and also the first to create racing tires for sport compact cars. Legendary MH Tires. Shop online. Mention the speed scene and save 5%. Get the best racing tires, great personal service, and save 5%. Go to mandhtires.com or call them 
at 661-324-4773. MNHtires.com. Serve to defend our great country and our freedom. All of us here in the United States of America would like to offer our sincere appreciation for all that you do and all that you've done. To every family that has made a sacrifice for us, we thank you. Welcome back to more of Speed Scene Live, the number one online drag racing TV show. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, m and Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, and TheFoat.com. Where does the time go? we got to pack more stuff in because there's only a few minutes left. I'm Bruce Barker. There's Hot Rod Bob Beck, the Great American Auto Scene special show tonight. Mm-hmm. Alex the Cargo Rogio, good to hear the... Uh, the updates on the Magnum, and man, that thing's got to get back on the road. Hey, Troy Ladd from Hollywood Hot Rods. Now, we were just talking a little bit during the break about SEMA. And yeah, you're, yeah. Uh, is it okay to mention this uh, this thing you got that you guys it, are going to be building for I, SEMA? I believe it is. Okay. Um, it's a little premature, but uh, we'll just leak it out. It's all right. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, all right. So, does it whispering keep it more, so, yes, uh, so more it secret? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They can hear you as well. It doesn't <laughs> spread. Um, we've, we've, you know, everyone goes SEMA. Um, we've, mm-hmm. d- we've done quite a few display cars for SEMA, and I've had cars on the Ford booth two years uh, in the past, and we have a third. But this time, we're Ford is giving us a 2000 14 Mustang convertible, Ooh. and we're going to redesign it hot rod style mm. and then unveil it at the SEMA show. Wow, oh, that's going to be great! So, I, I should get the car to tomorrow. I know. Yeah. Oh, so uh, you're but, supposed to get it tomorrow? Yeah, and it's not my, like Bob said, it's not much time. I'm getting the car tomorrow from the factory, and then we have to build it bef- and to unveil it. It's done by November. Yeah, and Man. we don't do everything, anything easy. We're going to no. actually build a alum- all aluminum lift off roof for the convertible. Oh, oh wow. wow. But Chopped. Cool. Chopped. So, so now I've said too much. So, no. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, so a Carson style top and a Mustang. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Tradition. I didn't realize. But, I was but it'll be but but it'll be yeah. uh, brushed aluminum. But, oh. So it won't it won't it won't be padded. Oh. Yeah, it'll be a brushed aluminum. Oh, kind of like the Burritz Cadillac. Yeah. Yes. From the fifties. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay. The, the theory is we kind of wanted to take the muscle car that you know the muscle car that is Mustang yeah. and really put it to, into an arena that it would sit next to Audis and Lamborghinis Ooh. and things. I like was trying to build a supercar. Out uh, of again, it. back to the coach build. Mm. Theory that yeah. you have, yeah. So even totally different thing, but you take the concepts of what we do normally and okay. put it on a new car. We're hoping it works. Right? All right, now <laughs> if you want to be one of the best dressed guys in your neighborhood, you might want to cl- log in to the Hollywood Hot Rod site and check out some of the great Hollywood Hot Rod goodies. I mean, besides building cars, you've got a whole line of clothing wow. and uh, accessories to go along with them. And I'll tell you what, I was amazed at some of the shirts at this year's uh, L.A. Roadster show that you guys had on display. You, I mean, I've got one of the old ones. I've got one of the original jackets sitting in the closet. Oh, wow. And, uh, we don't even make those anymore. Those I know. It's the collector's old, items. The right? old Dicky shirt well, jacket. Yeah, 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 you got that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, yeah. <laughs> before that. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, you can go on to There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the site, the address of the site is HollywoodHotRods.com. All right, easy Pretty and simple. Easy. And check it out because you've got a whole store section. You've got a section on new builds. You've got a section on builds that you've already done. You've got the videos, like we, the There's one a few we just videos, showed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, somewhere in there, the, the 44 that we're talking about, yeah. if you go on the 44's page, there is a video link to that the coyote on the dyno, oh, which okay. is pretty cool. That yeah. is cool. Um, cause ah, oh, yeah. You guys would like, you know, 7,000 yeah. RPM on a dyno has right. a engine good dyno. Here engine dyno. Um, yeah, no, engine it's dyno. actually chassis dyno. Oh, it's chassis, chassis dyno, dyno. Yeah, yeah. It's got the rear wheels. Yeah, so. But it shows you some of the work that was done on that 40, how subtle it is, and how, you know, 
you, you don't see any big bondo spots on this thing. That's after, you know, those That's pictures right there chopped. after it's chopped. Yeah, and then special wheels and the t- I mean, every part of this car was touched. This is what was the the Drake bodies that uh, came out? Yeah, now that's Dennis Carpenter. Dennis Carpenter bought the molds. Um, well, not to get too far into that car, but the, yeah. the cool thing about that is the day that it was done, they took it uh, from my shop and drove it to Texas. Mm. And from Texas, they drove it all summer, nonstop, never saw a trailer, and it had 20,000 miles on it wow. in one summer, three months. Man, wow. that's without much sorting yeah. or, or, or anything. No, and then from there, they <laughs> took it to SEMA, and it was on display at SEMA in the Ford booth. Wow. And then directly from the Ford booth from the show car display, the picture, one of those pictures you went up, you went by was racing at the Optima Challenge right. in Pahrump, Nevada, which is a road course, autocross, start, yep. stop, and rally. And there it is on the the West Tech yep. uh, dyno, the chassis dyno. Now, what engine was in this car? Coyote. Coyote. And there was a whole write-up on it in Street Rider magazine mm-hmm. that followed the build and the finished product. And uh, I'll tell you what, you've got you've done great for the hot rodding industry and the hobby itself. Uh, thank you for coming in. Uh, what's on your agenda this weekend, uh, Alex? Any more racing or um, you car know, shows? Or? I am just working on the magazine and um, you know, getting ready for the to head out next Tuesday to go to Vegas and get this car ready to go on the track. I can't wait, as I've said. Oh, <laughs> oh, now back, yeah, and back to drag racing. I'm going to be at Irwindale Thursday night for Thursday Night Thunder. We'll Excellent. be racing under the lights. And then Saturday... Irwindale's Oval opens back, is open again, and this will be another Saturday night under the lights on the Premier Oval in Southern California. Wow. I'll tell you what, two nights of racing at Irwindale this week. I'm going to be down there for the drags and the Oval. So come on down, uh, say hi. It's also Ford Night at Irwindale Speedway, the car show area. At the last count, there was about 30 or 40 hot rod Fords going to be on display. Well, why have I not yeah. joined the fray there? Well, I don't know. <laughs> you ought to come up. Bring the speed scene cameras with you, and we'll get you on the oval. Man, i got to get some running first and all that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Hitzel, the Hitzel pickup would be great. Yeah, well, there, yeah. There's a cat in the back of here right now. Yeah. You better not drive it Bring with I just want somebody along. to steal the television out of the back. <laughs> there you go. Jeez, will somebody please <laughs> steal my TV? Well, thank you, Troy, for coming out to Speed Scene Live and sharing your gas with us. Alex, always a pleasure to have you <laughs> wow. on, on in studio. <laughs> Brucey, how you doing, guy? I see you're walking around pretty good. We're glad you're always here. Oh, man, i got a foot and it works. That's Woo! it. Life is good. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. We're all above the grass. Yeah, there you <laughs> have Taking it. Taking nourishment. Hey, uh, Hot Rod Bob, good to see you again. It's been Thanks. a couple of weeks since you it had has. a great American Auto scene going. That's right. So, uh, all right. Look, everybody's back next week. We all got to do this again. Hopefully, you'll be back as well. Thanks I for will. joining us for the show. And, uh, of course, the encore presentation of the show airs next. By all means, join us every Tuesday night, 6 o'clock Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern. And if you're living in London, let's see, that would be 2 mm, in the morning. Something like that. 2 in the morning. All right. Lots of Red Bull, lots of rock star, and we're good to go. Um, hey, you guys, uh, let's do this again soon. How about yeah. that? It's that sounds good to me. You. All right. Good night, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next time. Never- Speed Scene Live TV, the number one online motorsports TV show. Brought to you by Curry Racing Rear Ends, M&H Tires, and TheFolk.com.